Paul, everybody talks about the laws of nature, the laws of physics, but the definitions seem a little woolly. Uh, help me understand what are the laws of nature? Well, at school, we learn these various laws. Uh, for example, the law of gravity. Gravity gets weaker the further away you go from the Earth or the Sun. Uh, and there's a definite mathematical relationship. And then there are laws for magnets and, and whatnot. So uh, you look in the textbooks, and there are a couple of dozen uh, laws. And the question is, uh, are they the last word? Well, almost no physicist will say that this is the end of the story, that that is just nature's inventory of laws. Uh, the hope is that as we dig deeper and find out more, that the total number of laws will get less and less, and that we'll somehow discover more and more fundamental laws. The history of science is really the history of finding links or connections between things that we've thought were separate. So for example, heat and energy were once separate things. We now realize that heat is a form of energy. Uh, energy and mass were once separate. We now know that energy is, has mass and mass is a form of energy. And so we go on. Electricity and magnetism, perhaps the classic example, people used to think they were separate phenomena. We now talk about electromagnetism because they're amalgamated. So uh, the history of physics has been the history of the successive um, discovering of linkages and the amalgamation of different types of uh, laws into a deeper and deeper set. And then the question arises, is there an end to that process? Can we envisage a time in the future where there perhaps be one super law that encompasses all of the others? And why is it that we have this impression of a collection of laws? Well, one possibility is that uh, as you raise the energy or raise the temperature of the system, that it gets simpler and simpler. So if you imagine going back to the Big Bang and the super hot condition at the beginning, it could be that uh, there was a sort of super force or super law that reigned supreme, and it was wonderfully simple and elegant, and that as the universe cooled, uh, just as matter became more complicated, so maybe the laws became more complicated and congealed out into what we now find in the textbooks. And in that view, the, the textbook laws are sort of um, effective low energy secondary laws. They're not really the primary laws. And opinions differ about this. When I was a student, there was a, a fashionable theory that there were really no truly fundamental laws, mm. that uh, they were just um, deeper and deeper levels and it would go on forever. Uh, each described by a different sort of mathematics. That seems to have gone away. So I think there is a general feeling among physicists that there ought to be uh, a final set of laws or even a single super law out there somewhere. But, important point here, uh, these laws, physicists believe, really exist. That is to say uh, that they're not just our inventions. We don't read the order into nature, we read it out of nature. We discover really existing regularities in the world about us. Because uh, there is a, a school of thought that these laws, and indeed science in general, is just a sort of cultural activity that physicists have made these laws up just for convenience for organizing their, uh, their subject. Well, I think that's, that's a load of baloney. Uh, the laws really are out there. And when we say uh, that uh, gravity gets weaker like an inverse square law, it really does. So it's a property of the world. It's not something we've invented. Now, how did the constants of nature relate to the laws of nature, the relationship between uh, forces or weights in the atom. Uh, sometimes they're close, sometimes they have vast differences between them. What is the relationship between the constants, the numbers, and the laws themselves? First, I should say that physicists believe that the laws of physics really underpin all laws of nature. Because some of the laws of nature, like, say, Mendel's laws of genetics, seem to have to do more with um, statistics and uh, systematic properties of things and not uh, at the, the very basic level. So these laws of physics are all mathematical in form, uh, but uh, you can write down that mathematics, but most of them come with uh, what we call undetermined constants. And the classic example is the force of gravity. It's one of the earliest laws to be discovered by Newton. Uh, and it's, it's so-called inverse square law. What it means is that uh, if you took the Earth to twice the distance from the Sun, the gravitational force of the Sun would fall to one quarter, and if it were three times, it would be one ninth, and so on. Um, so Newton was able to write down such a law, uh, but what he couldn't tell from that law was what the absolute strength of that force of gravity is. There's an undetermined constant. We call it Newton's gravitational constant. If that constant were twice as big, the law would stay the same, 
but the magnitude of the force would double. Mm. And so the question then arises, what is it that determines the value of that constant? So when you go to school, you just learn, you get a given a table. That's, that's the numbers of them. You've got things like also the uh, charge on the electron is another one. Uh, if it were twice as big, then electrical forces would be twice as big, but it is what it is. Uh, then there are the various masses of the fundamental particles, the mass of the electron, the mass of the proton, the mass of the neutron, and so on. It's a table of numbers. So all up, there are about 30-something mm, uh, undetermined parameters. These are numbers that go into our standard model of particle physics and cosmology, uh, but which have no explanation for w within the theory. They are what they are, derived by experiment. Right. You have to use observation. That's right. So when I was a student, you were told, well, that's what they are. Uh, you can't ask why are they those numbers, just accept from, for, for, for what they are and get on with the job. Uh, but now there are more ambitious ideas that maybe one day we'll be, be able to explain those numbers from within physical theory. Uh, so far we can't do that, but people are looking ahead to a time when uh, maybe uh, all of those numbers could somehow emerge from some super-duper theory, from a, a welter of breathtaking mathematics, and out would come those numbers, and you'd have more to explain. Uh, now, and there's another point of view, which is uh, that these numbers are pretty much arbitrary. Uh, that is, that they are not truly fundamental numbers at all, but they depend on the actual state of the universe, so that if the Big Bang went bang again, you'd come up with a different set of numbers, and maybe there are other Big Bangs in other regions of the universe where those numbers are different. So in addition to the the form of the laws, we've got these undetermined numbers or parameters or, or constants of physics, uh, which are a mystery. And, uh, and so then that... So we have two mysteries, so, and, and the, the, the relationships and the laws themselves, right. and then the free parameters, the constants that uh, determine the absolute value of these laws. Right. So if you, you imagine wanting to change things, you could... Uh, the, 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 the less drastic change is you keep the form of the laws the same, mm. but you just change some of these constants. You make the electron a bit heavier or gravity a bit stronger or something, but you have the same laws. And then the more drastic thing is you have different laws. <laughs> now... It is, has been one of the fundamental principles of physics that neither the laws nor the constants change. That what we see here applies throughout the universe and throughout all time in the past and the future. That's been right. challenged a bit. Yes, it has. And now one of the founding acts of faith, I suppose, uh, in the whole physical description of the universe is that these laws are universal. Again, Newton's law of gravitation is a universal law. It's supposed to be a universal law. It's supposed to be the same on Alpha Centauri as in the solar system and on the other side of the universe, uh, billions of light years away. It's supposed to be the same uh, laws. But is that in fact the case? Uh, now, of course, people have, have put this to the test. Uh, they've looked far out into space and far back in time uh, to figure out whether anything has changed. Uh, you know, maybe electricity's got a bit stronger over the last few billion years, or maybe as you go to that bit of the universe over there, light uh, travels a little bit faster than it does in that bit of the universe over there. So these things can be tested, and the first thing to say is that uh, pretty much all of the tests uh, show no evidence at all for any variation over billions of years of time and billions of light years of space. But there is some suggestive evidence that maybe uh, at least one of these fundamental quantities has changed with time. Uh, this evidence comes from examining the spectral lines of distant uh, quasars. Now, quasars are highly energetic objects uh, billions of light years away, and they glow. And from the quality of their light, you can see uh, certain characteristic uh, barcodes. It's a bit like you go to the supermarket and you bleep through the barcode. Well, light comes with those things as well, and it tells you uh, a bit about the nature of the atoms that are doing the emitting of the light and the absorbing on the path in the way. And uh, studies that have been carried out by a colleague of mine, uh, John Webb at the University of New South Wales, and his collaborators like John Barrow in Cambridge and others, uh, they have looked uh, systematically at a very large number of spectral lines from these quasars, and they see a hint, but it's no more than that, that something has changed a little bit over the last uh, few billion years. And one way of interpreting what has changed is to say that electricity, the force of electricity has got a little bit stronger, or alternatively that the speed of light has slowed down a bit, and uh, you ha always have to be careful with these statements because you have to compare like with like. So that the 
uh, particular quantity they look at is something called the fine structure constant. But, it's but the this thing would that be measures. startling if oh, you oh, have yes. the, the, the charge of electricity or the speed of light <clears throat> varying. Yeah, that, we're that, talking about tiny amounts, I might say. It we're doesn't, talking it doesn't about matter. a few parts in a million over That's, the last few but billion But the years, difference but, is between, if, right. if you can do it a little bit, uh, you could do it more. I it mean, shows it's not a true law. Yeah. Uh, that what we're talking about here, that we've been calling the laws of physics, are not truly universal laws, but they're malleable, they're changing. And so this uh, puts a completely different complexion. Now that you can take two attitudes, you can say, well, that's because we're not looking at the true laws. <clears throat> we're looking at some sort of effective law, and because the universe is expanding or something, it's changed a bit over time. And the other is to throw out the idea of universal laws and say, well, there are no such things as absolute universal, unchanging, unfailing laws, uh, that it's all shifting around in some sort of way that that makes you feel a bit queasy. If the latter, how would that affect your philosophy of the universe? My philosophy used to be that I uh, believed in the okay. existence of these unfailing platonic uh, laws that, that were out there and uh, predated the universe. But I've now come around to a point of view in which I think of the laws as uh, something a bit more like uh, programs run on the great cosmic computer, uh, and that these are not uh, infinitely precise. Uh, no real computer can run uh, an infinitely precise calculation. There's always some um, uh, error. Mm. And uh, furthermore, if you go back to the very early universe, uh, those errors would have been bigger. Uh, and so I have a view in which the laws of physics somehow um, emerge with the universe in the Big Bang and they settle down to something like what we observe today, but that they're not absolute and universal and that they have evolved with time, albeit not very much. So I would expect to find very slight uh, changes in the way they sort of congeal out. I'm not sure the changes that I would expect to find are quite what the astronomers think they are finding. But the general principle, uh, I think, is that, that these so-called laws are not absolutely nailed down once and for all. They're not God-given and there and unchanging, but they are part of the evolution of the universe. If that's true, that is a fundamental fact that any theory of not only physics, but a theory of reality must incorporate. Very definitely, because uh, in a way, the whole scientific project, which I might say grew out of, uh, of um, monotheistic theology, uh, there's a fundamental dualism at the heart of science, which goes back to that, which is that we have states of the world which change with time. These are contingent, time-dependent states. And then we have absolute universal laws. Uh, and this mirrors the theological idea of an unchanging perfect God, the lawgiver, uh, and a world which is contingent and, and time-dependent. So right from the outset of science, there has been this fundamental dualism that you have on the one hand, absolute universal uh, time-independent laws, and on the other hand, you've got contingent time-dependent states. What I think we're finding is that uh, this dualism uh, is not correct, uh, that we have to consider laws and states as both being time-dependent, in fact, being interdependent. I would go so far as to say that look, the laws and states can evolve in an interdependent way. Uh, and what we're seeing now in the universe is a state of affairs in which uh, the laws are, to a very high degree of approximation, fixed and uh, universal, uh, and the states, of course, change with time. Observing the universe today, to a very high degree of approximation, the laws seem to be unchanging. They, they seem to be almost universal. Uh, but if we consider much earlier stages in the universe, just after the Big Bang, then I think everything was literally in the melting pot, both the laws and the states. And then this time-dependent nature of the laws would have been extremely significant.